Okay, so uh, welcome to uh, the Lars Rod talk. And today we're covering, um, what are we covering today again? Let's do the series circuit. Okay, let's start. That's a good idea. I do. Actually, you know just what? Of- yeah, I just thought of it. I can cover that. I think I, I got some material on I think that. So. You know, the other thing is that we have um, we have special news for you today because we have special technology that we have designed. The, Rod, do you want to tell them about the special technology we designed? Absolutely. Okay, there you go. All right, so as I was saying, for the first time ever, we're going to go with the... Ever on the planet. Ever. This is brand new technology. Brand no new. one on the planet has ever considered this before. Mm-mm. I don't We're know. going with it. Well, Rod, maybe, maybe somebody. Been considered. Ah, okay. You keep going. It didn't go so far. No, no, it's to make it happen. Implement, yeah, exactly. Oh, talk. So we're going with a dual camera setup. Dual meaning two. Camera meaning camera. Yeah, I can't point at the camera. No, because, yeah, oh, yeah, there it is. Actually, oh, yeah, actually right. no, the other camera's over there, but they don't know that. No, they're not. I'm pointing at the other camera. You guys don't even know that the other camera's over there. So, so this dual camera setup allows us to lecture you here. Oh. Now wait, let me flip over and do the flip flip. Now th- I'm just I'm just learning. What? There we go. Now we're back. All right. They lost see? us for a bit. Oh yeah. Anyway, you see, this is the second camera. Yeah, we got, that's the uh, second camera. We got a whiteboard. Wait, 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 wait. There you go. Wait, who's? Oh, who's the guy over there with the? Yep. Uh huh. Uh huh. Now you know what? Why don't I get into position over here, Rob? Uh, uh, and you can check to see if I'm the guy. Okay, that's me. Okay, welcome to today's lecture. Today's lecture is week five. To think about that. Uh, today is week five. No, this this whole week is. How do I say that, Rod? Is it, am I? I got it okay. Yeah, exactly. Welcome to week five. Welcome to week five. Series circuits in electromechanical engineering, and some of you guys are from mechanical engineering program, and that is what's happening. What, what else do I talk about? Am I doing pretty good? Can we get up cuts here? Like, these are like outtakes when I look at you, right? Yeah, I th- I'm sure. <laughs> outtakes on the fly. All right, guys. So, now, we've had some fun here. Uh, I tried to entertain you guys for a little bit. I'd like to kind of, for the first five minutes, just kind of like, just kind of talk about some stuff. But, yes, I'm really excited because now this is real. What we're doing is I am kind of in my element here where I am in front of a whiteboard. Yes, I'm a little excited about that. Front of whiteboard, so that's really cool. And uh, yes, we're going to do series circuits today, which are super cool. So I'm just going to kind of go over last week a little bit of what happened last week and what we're going to do next week. Um, and what's what's going on with the assignment? The quick, it's weird. Yeah, okay. So absolutely, it's weird. So bear with me on this weirdness of the assignment. Um, so I'll talk about the assignment, and then we'll get into the lecture, because last week, the only thing we did was, well, we did the lecture last week. Um, you guys have the homework and the quizzes. You're all good with that. Everybody's handed that stuff in. We're good. If you need extra time, email me. I'll give it to you. I will not give you extra time on anything. Rod, will I give extra time on anything if they email me after? No. Oh, yeah. So anyway, um, so as far as the assignment goes, yeah, it was kind of a work in progress. I'm still working on kind of getting another video out there on um, – how to do a cover page, but if you go into the assignment link, and it's still due this Sunday night, because it's it's actually a quick assignment. Someone's already handed their assignment in, and by the way, the one person who's handed their assignment in got their units wrong. Yeah, watch this. Okay, the unit for the resistance like was 100 and uh, 110 ohms, and they write O H M S. Dude, that is not a unit. It's a Word. It's not a unit, it's a word. So you cannot write ohms anywhere in any documentation to do that is mathematical. It's not grammatically correct. Please never ever do that again. Always use the ohm symbol. If you don't know how to make an ohm symbol, figure it out. Oh, this I get this serious. So here we go. So Rod is monitoring the questions. Um, so if you have any questions, you can pop in. Anyway, so as far as the assignment goes, um, I am still going to do a video on how to make a cover page. There's a video in there on how to make a table of contents. It's really good. I always start with a table of contents with any kind of report. Um, so I cleaned up the assignment a little bit. I made some small, small changes, but whatever you've looked at so far, you can roll with that. If you haven't looked at it, get on it, look at the assignment. So when you go in that link, 
There's a video there on how to make the assignment and actually what the assignment's all about. And there's another video in there on how to make a table of contents. I'm going to, I think there are two videos in there. What's the other video for? Oh, yeah. The other video is how to insert an image into a document and how to actually insert. Like, no kidding. If you're at school and you want to draw your circuit on the diagram on the board, actually, you won't be able to do that neatly, so don't even do that. But what I'm saying is if you take, if you take a picture of your of your circuit drawing and you want to import that in, how to do that is in that second video. So there are two short videos, they're like five minutes or something. I'm going to do another video on how to insert a cover page. So wait for that video before you do your cover page. Okay, so that's it. That's the assignment information. It's still due Sunday. Again, it's really not a lot of work. Make sure you use units. If you don't know what I'm talking about, about the units and about the mathematical grammar, well, go watch the video on the actual assignment. And I talk about the actual PowerPoint in there that's called uh, technical mathematical documentation. Just to follow that and always use units that are real, not words. Thank you very much. Okay, good. So um, there's that. Last week we did that. Next week we're going to preach. We're going to do what we're doing now. I'm going to introduce to you um, the, the next assignment, which is uh, assignment two, which is much more complicated than your first assignment. And you're going to have like two weeks to do that. Yeah, you're going to have all of all of week, actually three. You're going to have all of week four, all, sorry, all of week five, all of week six, most of week five, all of week six, and all of week seven. Not really all of week seven, which is actually the break. So and all of the break. And then it'll be, it'll be due Sunday night of the break. Okay, good. So with that said and done, let's get on this and actually talk about today's information is series circuits. So I'm going to jump over to the PowerPoint, and I'm going to like, Go into the PowerPoint, and I'm going to do some PowerPoint, and then what I'm going to do is when I actually want to, like, walk through what's going on, I'm actually looking at projectors. I want to get a projector here so I can actually have the PowerPoints and, like, do the thing and, like, be kind of, like, in lecture. Um, then what I'm going to do is I'm going to jump back and forth from here. So before I get my projector, I'm going to have to jump back and forth between my laptop and go through the lecture material, and then I'll stop, and I'll be like, let me show you how this works on the board and ask you questions live. Okay, so here we go. Let's jump over here, and uh, I will jump into the lecture material, and I will uh, sip my tea first. All right, and I will find my glasses. Does anyone know where my glasses are? Oh, here they are. I got my glasses. All right, so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to jump over here to go, and I'm going to share my screen. So I have the Beach Boys in my head because Rod and I just went to make tea and um, I I did the Beach Boys. What song were we listening to? Good Vibrations. It's a good tune. So everyone should put on the song Good Vibrations by the Beach Boys. So um, let me kind of give you the heads up a little bit. So these are the um, the lectures. So I'm going to download this and, and talk to you guys about it. But this is actually a really good video. I'm just going to start it right now just for a minute, just for a sec. So it's actually me talking about a series. So it's I'm, I'm walking through a series circuit, talking about how to select a fuse, talking about to put some control in there, talking about how the current works, how the power works. I calculated a whole bunch of stuff in that so i really strongly watch i suggest you guys watch that it's 14 minutes long um i did this last year my new thing is i've been putting the the time in in the actual uh, icon here but anyway it's 14 minutes long whatever so let's let's go to here i'm going to download my powerpoint do, 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 do. It's download i'm going to start it up okay so here we go let's fire this up and let's take a look at the powerpoint and um we'll go from there Okay, enable editing, whatever. So, dude, I, I don't know, what the? Camtasia Studio. So, slideshow from the beginning, whatever. So, this is a great PowerPoint. Uh, I will hide this guy, and uh, it's got lots of um, animations in it, and let's go for it. So, yeah, series circuits, so introduction to controls, and this is me, as you guys know. So, I want to introduce you guys to Robert Kirchhoff. Gistoff, Robert Kirchhoff, pardon Ooh. me. So, Gistoff, Robert Kirchhoff. Gustav, 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 I don't know. Anyway, there you go. We will all know his name by the name Kirchhoff. So Kirchhoff was a really cool dude. He actually was a German physicist, and he talked about voltage laws and current laws, current laws. But he actually, his whole thing was he actually studied light and electromagnetic radiation and 
uh, thermal EM radiation and electric circuits and stuff. So he's a pretty cool dude. And there he is there. So, so you know, heads up to Kirchhoff, heavy dude. So he came up with these rules that we're going to talk about. So we're going to be talking about, um, we're going to be talking about Kirchhoff's, I'm going to go back to Kirchhoff. We're going to be talking about Kirchhoff's series circuits. You know what? Let's do this. Let's let's see how this works. Can you flip me over to here quickly? How does that work? So Kirchhoff's, which cool, was a cool guy. We're going to actually study. We're going to use Kirchhoff's laws um, to understand how the current moves and how the voltage is divided in circuits, in either a series circuit or a parallel circuit. So Kirchhoff worked with Ohm's law, right? So Kirchhoff's laws don't work without Ohm's law. So Ohm's law are the foundation. We're going to take Ohm's law and we're going to apply them to Kirchhoff's principles. He doesn't really come up with laws or formulas per se. His formulas are not really, they're pretty straightforward formulas. They're more like principles that actually just end up saying, okay, well, these principles, you can use basic formulas for them. But we're going to take the formulas of Ohm's law and apply them to Kirchhoff's principles. So with series circuits, Kirchhoff, he said, this is how the voltage is divided in series circuits. And then he studied parallel circuits, and he said, this is how the current is divided in parallel circuits. And then there were these series parallel circuits. We're going to study Kirchhoff's principles over the next two days. So all we're going to do today is talk about Kirchhoff. Next week, we're going to talk about Kirchhoff. We're going to apply the rules of Kirchhoff through Ohm's Law. Okay, let's get on it. Welcome to the learning objectives. So, what we're going to do is we're going to identify what a series circuit is. Because I keep talking about series circuit. What does that mean? Um, we determine the current in a series circuit. Okay, we're going to use we're going to use Ohm's Law to do that. And we're going to determine the total series resistance, which is actually pretty cool. That's actually Ohm's Law. That's that's Kirchhoff's law in that's Ohm's law in application on top of Kirchhoff's law. Like I told you, they're they're going to be mixed. And then we're going to apply Ohm's law in a series circuit, and we're going to determine the total effect of voltage sources in series, which is pretty cool. And there's a little bit of a trick here, so I'm going to try and trick you guys. Um, it's almost like a puzzle. Okay, let's continue on. Uh, we're going to apply Kirchhoff's voltage law. We're going to use a series circuit as a voltage divider. This is actually really important that we understand how this works. It's a voltage divider concept. And we're going to determine power in a series circuit. And when we get into power in a, in, a, in a parallel circuit and a series parallel circuit, you are going to be blown away. I mean, not blown away, but you'll be really interested. Okay, determine and identify ground in a circuit. Uh, yeah, let's continue on. Okay, good. So, dude, this is a series circuit. Now, it's not a full series circuit because there's no actual power here. There's no power supply. There's no voltage. I mean, there's no um, battery. But these resistors are connected in there is only one path for the current to travel through so if you look at this the one path concept the current goes from here through there and then see back to the battery again but however you look at it the current can only go through one path so over here it goes through one path and over here it's one path and one path and as you can see these images are from the book because they go from negative to positive the way that electrons actually really flow, even though we look at electrons flowing the other way in conventional theory. Okay, good. So this is pretty cool. This is a formula that's really simple. I think it's an intuitive formula. It actually is essentially uh, formulated through Kirchhoff's laws and Ohm's law. And what we can see is the total resistance of this circuit is simply the addition of these three resistors. So if I have three resistors in series, then I connect them together like this, and the total resistance is just by adding them, and it's that simple. So I'm not even gonna like talk about this formula anymore because it's so basic and simple, and I think it's just intuitive. It just makes sense. You can probably make the formula up yourself if you forget it, but I'm gonna like jump on the other screen so it's like not even there anymore. Okay, dude, what's the total resistance here? Well, I'm gonna take this, plus this, plus this. Now, before I show you this, I wanna show you guys, now we cannot add things that are different. If this was 62 ohms, and that was 2.2 kilo ohms, and that was 2.7 kilo ohms, we couldn't just add them. We'd have to change this to kilo ohms or this to just ohms. But in this case, they're all the same. So we're going to write the formula down. The second thing you do is fill in the formula. Okay, there you go. Now, they're all in kilo ohms, so they all can be added in kilo ohms. And then write the answer, and there's the answer. Three steps. One, two, three. Okay, good. Nice and simple. Okay, so 
if then we know that this has a mega ohms and that has a kilo ohms and that has a kilo ohms dude and that has an ohms what do we do they don't all have the same metric prefix so we have to actually give them either the same metric prefix or we use engineering notation so again we write the formula we don't put anything in and then we fill in the formula and we fill it in like this yeah we use engineering notation because in this way, when we write engineering notation, we go down to what I call the base unit. It's just ohms, 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 ohms. We're not, no longer are we adding mega ohms and kilo ohms. We're just adding ohms with ohms with ohms with ohms. So I'm replacing this M with 10 to the 6 times 10 to the 6. I'm replacing this K with 10 to the 3. I'm replacing this K with 10 to the 3, and that's already in ohms anyway. Fill out the formula, write down the answer, and there's you go. There's your goal. There's your goal. There's your goal. Okay, good. So now here we go. They don't have the same metrics. This is giga, that's mega, and mega, and that's kilo, and that's ohms. Dude, you just simply write down the formula, and then you fill in the formula. And in this case, I have to fill in with all engineering notation because I have to go to a base unit. I have to replace this G with times 10 to the 9. That M with times 10 to the 6, times 10 to the 6, and, blah, blah, and go on. And then you write the answer down, and you're golden. You're good. Um, okay, so let's continue here. Now, Kirchhoff's law, voltage law, this is the important thing. The rest of the lecture will be based on this, this equation. Actually, this formula, hold on, let me just, well, let me go back here. This formula, which is completely intuitive, is actually based off of Kirchhoff's voltage law, he probably established his voltage law because this was so intuitive. I don't know. I haven't read his his um, his notes, but you can get them. I'm actually Rod, go get Kirchhoff's notes, his notebook. Um, and here we go. So no, it's okay. Don't actually use I that. Could, I could. I know. I know you could. Right. Okay. Here we go. So now Kirchhoff's, Kirchhoff's voltage law is dude. The voltage drop across this plus the voltage drop across this plus the voltage drop across that equals the source voltage. So the source voltage is the source is the voltage potential that's driving the circuit. It's the it's the pressure that's coming out of your source driving the circuit. Now, as the current flows through one resistor, we lose pressure across the resistor or voltage. Yes, I'm using the word pressure and voltage interchangeably because in physics, ultimately, they're really the same thing. Okay, let's go on here. So I'm losing some voltage across here. So I have a voltage drop. The amount of voltage I lose here plus the amount of voltage I lose here plus the amount of voltage I lose here equals the total source voltage. So the voltage drop plus the voltage drop plus the voltage drop equals this. So V1, V, uh, all of this. There you go. That's Kirchhoff's voltage law. So let's actually apply this law and do some really cool things with it. Okay, good. So here we go. What we're going to do is, and it's actually uh, another way of looking at this is pretty cool. In any closed loop network, the total voltage around the loops is equal to the sum of all the voltage drops within the same loop. So that's another way of looking at it, which actually ends up that the total sum is equal to this. So if we put it like this, we can rewrite the formula like this. And this is pretty cool for doing really cool proofs and stuff because it's pretty cool to sometimes have two formulas that add up to zero and then make them equal to each other. But that's a whole other thing. So it's just another way of looking at it. But let's actually put Kirchhoff's voltage law into application. So we know that somehow we don't have access to the actual voltage source, right? It's in some box somewhere. There's just some wires coming out of it. We don't. We want to know what the total voltage source is. We want to know what the voltage is. So, but I have access to each of the loads in the circuit all of the loads or all of the resistors in the circuit because we can call it loads resistors and vice versa i can measure the voltage drop across each one okay i'm having a huge voltage drop across this i've got kilovolts and then i've got this huge voltage 854 volts down here i've got 8.15 volts down here i've got 118.6 millivolts and over here i've got microvolts that's ridiculous wow i've got to add this plus this plus this plus this plus this and that will give me the total voltage All right i'm going to go ahead and do the math here i'm going to write down the formula and then i'm going to simply fill the formula in but it's maybe not so simple because i need to put this volts 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 i have to get rid of this metro prefix rid of that metro prefix 
and rid of this one and leave them all with the base unit volts, but I have to use engineering notation. And to do that, I just simply methodically look at each one. And I know the first one is going to be 5.14 times 10 to the 3. And then I write it down and blah, 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 blah. Now, look at what I did here. So, by the way, this is 1,400. And this U micro is times 10 to the negative 6. Now, to save me writing down a V every single time, again, like I told you guys, you can do math with the units. I just put a V outside my bracket. Again, I always want to see you guys putting your units in all calculations. So here we go. And the answer is this. I'm right. That's the actual answer. That's what my calculator said. But I like to kind of make this, I'd like to put this into a metric prefix because generally we like to write numbers with metric prefix and that is going to be kilo. So I write down is six kilo volts. Nice and simple and easy. There you go. So I can then find my voltage source knowing Kirchhoff's law by adding up all of the voltage drops across a resistor, a bunch of resistors in network. Okay, good. So Kirchhoff also looked at current in circuits. He studied how current moves through uh, both series and parallel circuits. He also studied how voltage acts in a series and parallel circuit. In a parallel circuit, he looked at current. And he said, essentially, what's going on is that the current in any point in a series circuit is the same. That helps us so much in Ohm's law. And I will show you examples of that in a moment. Okay, take a look at this. At any point, so let's actually kind of break this down and study a point in a circuit. If I look at a point in a circuit, and I know this is a little kind of almost silly, but roll with me on this. The current going into a node is the same current leaving a node in a series circuit. Guess what? It's not true in a parallel circuit. We'll talk about that next week. So bear with me here. The current going into a point, or what we call a node, is the current going in here is the same as the current leaving. And also, the current that's going through all of these resistors is the same. Now, as soon as I remember, I actually remember learning this. And I remember saying to myself, wait a second. How can the current going through this resistor, if it has a different resistance, and this resistor having a different resistance, and this resistor having a different resistance, all be the same current when they all are resistors? Well, there are, there's actually two ways we can look at that. One is mathematically, we can boil it down, which I'd like to do for you. And the other is simply, dude, there's only one path. It's like, imagine water. Imagine water flowing through here. And like this is, say, a, rich, a restriction. Or maybe in your brain, just design a pump that runs on water. It's like a little, no, not a pump, a motor. It's a, it's a little motor, and it just runs on water. It's got a little impeller in it, and it's a motor, and it runs on water. Put another motor here that's smaller, and another motor here that's bigger. So the resistance of this one, and this one, and this one are all the same, because the size of each motor, each water motor, is different. Now, have a pump make the water flow through. You can definitely say that the same amount of water molecules per unit time going through the first motor is the same as the number of water molecules per unit time going here and here. The flow rate is the same. Remember, current is a flow rate. So in this case, electrically, there are just as many coulombs per second traveling through here. You keep tapping there. Oh, I'm sorry, I just put my... Uh, okay, I will know that. Down. I was wondering if you were trying to get my attention. Like, oh, Lars, I, I, should, I should, yeah. My okay, dad. good. Thank, no, that's all right, sir. So um, <clears throat> here we go. So the amount of current, the flow rate is the same through all of these, even though the resistors may, the resistive values may be different. And I'll show you that in Ohm's law. Okay, so now let's take a look at this. Right here, I've got a 10 volt source. And I know my voltage drop uh, across here is three volts. Okay, so. The, like I measured the voltage drop across here. It's three volts. So, and I can calculate the current going through this one resistor. Well, guess what? Ohm's law just told me the current going through this resistor and through this resistor. Yeah, that's so cool. Like that is, you know what? I don't, I have to like, I have to figure out a way I can do this. Hold on guys, just bear with me. I'm trying to go over to the 
Here I go. I am here. Okay. I just have to be here with you, tell you how amazing that is. Okay. So the if we have three resistors in series and we were to study the current going through one of the resistors, we knew the voltage drop across one of the resistors. Okay. So I know the voltage drop across one of the resistors. I know the value of that resistor. I can use Ohm's law easily to calculate the current. I is V over R. Okay. So I know the voltage and I know the resistance. So I have now calculated the current through only one of the resistors. Well, guess what? Now I'm going to jump back over here. Well, no, that's, that didn't work. I, just, I wish I could be just seamless. Hold on. <laughs> okay. Okay. Guess what? I've calculated the current through just this resistor. That's also the current through here. And it's also the current through here. Even though that's two ohms and that's five ohms, the current going through each is the same. Now, let me ask you a question. Just in your head, I ask you this. If I knew the voltage drop across this was three, because I measured it, what's the voltage drop across this one? Well, I don't know, but I've got a clue. It's in between three and 10. And the voltage drop across this is also in between three and 10. But I can definitely say that the voltage drop across this plus the voltage drop across this minus this equals minus three. Or I could say that three is equals three. I could say that 10 minus this minus that equals three. I think that makes sense to you. So I can say that this voltage drop plus this voltage drop plus this voltage drop equals that. So I can easily find the voltage drop across both of these, but not any one of them. But if I knew the current going through here, I could calculate the voltage drop across here. And then through Kirchhoff's law, I could calculate the voltage drop here. So if I knew, I now know the current through here, I can use Ohm's law to calculate the voltage drop across this resistor. With that, I now have, through Ohm's law, the voltage drop across this resistor. I have the voltage drop across this resistor because I measured it. Through Kirchhoff's law, I can take this voltage and this voltage and find the difference between this voltage and 10 volts, and it would tell me what the voltage drop across here. So my point is, the reason the current is the same here and here and here is because the voltage drop across this and the voltage drop across that are different than the voltage drop across this, and it all balances out because if I use Ohm's law, but if I were to calculate Ohm's law, if I knew the voltage drop across this and I used Ohm's law, it would come out to give me one amp. So I think that hopefully that makes a lot of sense to you guys. So, yeah, so there you go. So let's take a look at an example here. So the, the current is the same through all resistors in a circuit. Okay, so the resistance is this. Let's just say the resistance is 5.9 kilo ohms. Okay, so I can just simply do the math and I can come up with this. So I'm going to put 18 volts and then divided by this. Now, I'm, gonna, I'm not going to write kilo ohms here. I'm going to use this. If you write kilo ohms there, that's fine with me. But as long as you don't forget to do the math and actually put this into your calculator. So many people on so many exams have made that mistake where they write 5.9 kilo ohms. And then when they do the math, they write 18 divided by 5.9. And they come up with some extremely large current. This is milliamps. That's three thousandths of an amp. Pretty small. Cool. So now I know the current through this resistor because I calculated it, and that's that's what's going on. So now here I can, if I add some resistors and I do a little bit of change here, I can say this resistor, if I wanted to look at this resistor, I could say this resistor is actually made up of three different resistors. This 1K, that 2.2, and that 2.7. So I'm trying to trying to wrap the wrap your head around the fact that I can have three different resistors all with the same current by actually kind of adding them all up into one big resistor and saying they're all 5.9 and calculating the current. So I think that kind of maybe is just another way of looking at how the current can be the same in all of these different resistors because. Essentially, this battery looks at these resistors as one big resistor. This battery, all it's doing is pushing out electrons. It knows that it's it, there's a certain amount of restriction or resistance in the total circuit. It doesn't know if that resistance is made up of 
three resistors or one resistor or all it knows is that it has to push up against a certain amount of resistance which is technically 5.9 ohms so it's another way of looking at it i hope that makes sense to you the other way is that if we wanted to we could use ohm's law to walk through it again and we could say okay so what's my res what's my current through here and the total current through here is going to be the same so i can calculate my current through here through ohm's law and i can find out it's one amp so i'm just doing the math and it's one amp now over here i'm also going to get one amp but i have a different resistance well the reason i'm going to get one amp is because over on this resistor i've got a voltage drop of 10 but over here i've got a different voltage drop so I can have a different resistor with a different voltage drop giving me the same current. So I hope that makes sense. So we can see now that even though I've got several resistors in a series circuit, the current is the same. We've looked at that from the fact that there's only one path for the current to go, so it has to be the same. And the other is that we can also look at <clears throat> from the viewpoint of the voltage source that it's just one big resistor and of course the current the current's going to be the same and the other way is actually walk through ohm's law and take a look at different examples where i'm going to take ohm's law and i'm going to take a resistor with 10 ohms and another resistor with ohms and show through ohm's law that the current is actually the same and that's because the voltage drop is different on either so i think that makes sense so and then we can just calculate it again and find that the total current is actually the total resistance Right, because total current is the total resistance and the total voltage, or more specifically, it's the total voltage over the total resistance. So there's another way of calculating it. So it, however you look at it, Ohm's law works here. We can take a Ohm's law for the total, Ohm's law for any specific one, and they're, they're all going to come out to one amp. Okay, good. So this is where we're going to get into voltage sources, and this is where I want to hop on the board. Ready, bamos, mammo, bamos, mammo. All right, but I'm delayed. I don't like it that I'm delayed. I guess they hear That's me so, delayed. But let me give it a sec. It's going to kick in. Oh, it's going to kick in? Okay, now it's kicked. It's so weird. I'm seeing myself delayed. I'm not going to look at the screen. No. Okay, guys, I want to show you something. I want to mess with you. Okay, this is where we play a game where see if Lars can trick you. All right, here we go. All right, so let's take a look at this. I am going to do this really cool concept where I'm taking a voltage source. Okay, cool. So I'm taking a voltage source and I'm actually going to add another voltage source to it. So I think we're good. Let's say this is one volt. This is also one volt. Okay, so we know from batteries when you put three batteries into a flashlight or two or whatever, if you've got one of those bag lights with three, three or four, six batteries, and some of those really big ones are really intense, right? So all of those batteries, when we put them together, are connected in series. They are power sources that are connected in series. Okay, that's fine. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to continue this over here. I'm going to connect another battery in series. And then down here, I'm going to connect another, another battery. Oops, it is. Well, no, 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 no. Okay, another battery in series. And down here, I'm going to connect another battery in series. And now I'm going to go over here. I'm actually going to go to a light bulb. And then I'm going to go in here. Let's put some control in here. Okay, so that's my lamp. Okay, so now I want you guys to, you know what, I'm going to, I'm going to give you a, a formula first. This is kind of a little bit dying. Do I have a better one? Okay, you can maybe put those together. Thank you, sir. Okay, so I'm going to give you a formula, and I'm going to write the formula over here. So V total equals Vs1 plus Vs2 plus Vs3 plus Vsn. Okay. Okay, good. So that is the formula for calculating the total voltage in a system the total voltage in a system so what i'm going with when we have all of these so that's one volt one volt one volt okay so what i need you guys to do right now let me you know what i'm gonna i'm gonna redraw this with with this i'm gonna redraw this with this 
Take a talk about another bullshit here, about another bullshit here, and a wolf here, and another bullshit here, and I come out here, and I write another bullshit here, and then I come out here, and I write another bullshit here, and I come out here, and I go back, 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 and uh, that this bulb is seeing. What's the voltage drop across that bulb, or what's the source voltage going to that bulb? Any thoughts? So we got one answer saying one volt, another, one, whoa, another answer one, saying five volts. Wait, wait a second. One, two, three, four, five. Okay, so, and we got one volt. Okay, anybody else? Yeah, we got five volts, people saying. A lot of people saying five. A lot of people saying five. Okay, good. That's good. You wrong. <laughs> Okay, ready? Watch this. Uh, let me pen here. Uh, red, red pen? Yes, red pen. Watch this. Plus negative. Wait, 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 wait. Plus, 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 plus. Negative, 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 negative. Ooh, we got the funky chicken going on. Okay. So this is actually what's happening, guys. This I love this. This is really good. Okay, this guy and this guy. Okay, so he is orientated in a way where, as the current, imagine the current is flowing this way. Okay, so the current is flowing that way. Just imagine it is. Okay, so we're we're looking at conventional current from positive to negative. Now, if we take a look at this guy. This guy is also orientated, so the current's going into the negative. Okay, that's good. So that's what's happening. Now, when we go into here, uh-oh, uh-oh, this guy is backwards. This guy is backwards. Oh, okay. Now, this guy is actually forwards, okay? So what we've got is this guy plus this guy plus this guy plus this guy all actually make a voltage. Right? We can add them up. But this guy is actually in reverse. Can you see that? So what this means is that when we add the values into our formula, we have to use polarity. So with that thought, what is the new voltage? Now that you guys know, what is the new voltage? I'm going to mess with them still. So somebody already said three. Okay. Someone said three. We have other people saying four volts. Have four volts, yeah. Saying three. I like the, I think four, three. Anybody else? Let me let me have five more answers before I do anything. Come on, say something. Yeah, come on, say something. Just guess. Is it four or three? Yeah, one. One. Two. Two. Three. Three. Four. Four. Five. Answers. Five. Okay, five answers. Uh, okay, what are they? What what's the, the general consensus? Uh, four. Ah. Seems to be the general. Ah. Okay, I love tricking you guys so much. Guess what? Watch this. I need another. I need a whole other color. Ready? Guess what? Guess what? These guys cancel each other out. Bammo, shmammo, dammo, do. Right? Look at that. That's plus and that's negative. This guy, so the actual total voltage here is three volts. This thing actually sees three volts. And if actually we do the math, let me actually do the math and I'll show you. Um, let me go back to my blue pen. Let me do the math. Okay. V total equals this is, this guy is one volt plus one volt plus, yep, one volt, one volt. Now, this guy is plus one volt. This guy is plus minus one volt. Right? So, one plus one plus one plus one minus one is three. Yeah, it's not four, right? Because essentially what's going on is that these two essentially just go, they go bye-bye. So I got one, two, three. So three volts. So, okay, this is one of those moments where I'm getting all serious. I can't do serious, Rod. <laughs> okay, this is me getting really serious. I'm going to put this question on the exam. Mm -hmm. That's all. Okay, so let's, yeah, 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 just to mess with you guys, but, like, it's just for those people who really didn't actually practice and try the homework, and then I do the homework, and then go through the process where, um, yeah, so serious. So, um, so they go through the process. Wait, wait, let me just do the, can I do the, can I do this? Hold on. Share, what about, what about me? How do I do me again? 
Is your video? Oh, is it me? Oh, no, I want to switch the camera. Yes. Anyway. I'm going to leave that camera. Um, okay, so now, why? how come I don't know what I'm doing? <laughs> I love it. I've got no clue. They pay me money to do this. To do this. <laughs> okay, guys, so here we go. So there you go. Um, the math is that simple, and you just kind of go blah, 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 blah. Then there is your formula, which is good. And this is an example that actually makes sense. We got this value plus this value plus value, and that's that. So um, now this one is a little tricky because you can see these two are opposite from each other, and this one is actually these two are the same, and that is actually the same as that, but that is opposite from this, and blah, 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 blah. And you actually, if you do the math, you say that's negative and that's negative, and you end up with 30 because you've only got one, two, three. These guys cancel out, and this cancels out with that. So there you go. So that's that's where that comes from. So the, I'm going to put a question like that on the exam. Here we go. So Ohm's law and Kirchhoff's law in action. So putting these guys together. So if, I, if I can say something. Yeah, please say so something, Rod. One guy wanted to talk about it. He said, what if there are resistors between? Oh, oh, I love it. Oh, man. I just, just, you know what? I, I think I can. What's this? If I just do this, if I do this, and I just go like this. Doesn't this just automatically pop? It does. it does. So as long as I don't turn the camera on for here, it's yeah, good. Exactly. Okay, good, 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 good. I love that. So let me let me just do this. Let me just. So that's V1. This is V2. Uh, that's actually, I'm going to call this source two, source one, and source three. Okay, so now what we're talking about right now is, is what voltage? So, wait a second. So the question is, it's a great question. The question is, well, what if we put a resistor in there? Okay, well, what if we do? Oh, and uh, we just did. So what's the question? I mean, it, it's a great question. It's a, it's a postulation of, hey, let's throw something in the mix and see what happens. Okay, let's see what happens. But if we're going to study to see what happens, we have to have a question. We have to say, okay, well, what's the question? Well, okay, if I wanted to know the voltage of this, let's say this 10 volts. Let's say this is 4 volts, and let's say this is 7 volts. I don't like, I can't do the math. I mean, I need to do a 6 volts. 6 volts. Now, in this case, they're all in the same way, so I don't have to do some weird funky math. Maybe we can do that in a bit, but just let's just stick to this. Now, I've got my R1 and R2, so my R1, whoa, R1, and this is R2. So my question to you is, what do you want to figure out? Well, there's no total voltage really anymore. I mean, what we do when we look at total voltage is we look at the voltage of all these all of these voltage sources being applied to a circuit some circuit over there right so if i were to actually just get rid of this and just say this so we can say okay so all of these voltages right, all of the pressure from these or the voltage that comes out of these sources is actually interacting with that so if we kind of put two points in this circuit we kind of say uh we could have a node here node a right and we could have node b it's it's good it's good practice to actually put nodes into our circuits and we can study circuit current circuit attributes specific to nodes so let's study the circuit attributes specific to these nodes okay so the circuit attributes specific to this well if I wanted to know the voltage across here or the voltage potential from A to B um, then what I would do is I would add this this and this so it's 20 so the voltage potential between A and B is 20 volts. Right, and if I were to make this minus, I'd actually have another voltage. So I'd have uh, 10 plus four minus six, so it'd be eight. So the voltage potential here would be eight volts. That's if this was reversed. I think that's right. 10 plus four is 14, minus six is eight, yes. So my voltage potential here is eight. I'm getting to the whole two resistors thing. Now, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna throw another resistor in here. As soon as we put another resistor in here, we're no longer looking at a bunch of voltage sources put together to drive some circuit. Before, this was our circuit. 
this could be much more complicated. But right now, it's just maybe one load. Maybe the circuit is just a motor or just a resistor. Um, so as soon as we unpack this, as soon as we put a resistor in here, then we're no longer just taking voltage sources and putting them together to drive some circuit. So we don't actually do this. Uh, I don't really see, and I can't think of an application for this, but the math behind this, we can do the math behind this. If I really wanted to figure it out, I would then, again, I have to put nodes in here, a node here and a node here. So this is B, C, and D. So what is the voltage drop across here? Because no longer, I'm not looking at voltage potentials anymore. Really, voltage potential is what's coming out of a battery. So if I were to say I had a battery here, um, if I'm just going to draw one battery here, okay? So that's my battery. And, you know, it's my voltage potential. And I see these two spots. I see a spot here and a spot here. And that's where I study voltage potential. I study voltage drop because I'm using some of the energy coming out of the thing that's giving me this voltage potential. So if I really wanted to, I could then put another load here. And now I'm looking at the voltage potential between these spots. As soon as I stick a load in here, I'm just doing weird, funky things, but it's cool and fun to play with math. So how do we look at this? Well, the thing is, this, this formula here no longer applies directly to this situation because this formula is all about what VT is. And VT is this. It's the voltage potential between these points, VT, and that's VS1 and VS2. So as you can see, this formula doesn't apply anymore. It's all about what perspective, what am I looking at? The way I would solve this, I'd actually use Ohm's law, and I'd try and calculate the current going through this, and then from there, I'd be able to figure it out. So the problem is this AB is no longer the sum of this plus this plus this, because I've got a voltage drop here. So as opposed to unpacking that a little further, I'm gonna leave you hanging with this and I'm going to do a little video solving that. I love this question. So it's a good question because it talks about why this is no longer just a voltage source. We're sticking things in between the voltage source, but we still are able to use Ohm's law. And in some way, we can still use this formula as well because we're going to calculate the total voltage of these. So we're going to replace these with one voltage source, and then we're going to have another voltage source here but we're going to end up looking at this. So this is kind of a, a pre to a pre uh, look at the, the the solution for this. What's going to happen is we're actually going to be looking at this. Where this guy here is going to be this plus this. So that's 14 volts. And this guy is 10 volts, right? He's, he's 6 volts. 6 volts. And that is going to be R1 and R2. So with that, you guys can take this. So what we do is we, we made this from these two, from this formula. And then from there, we've got this whole new circuit. So you guys can struggle with that. I'll do a whole other video on that. I'm going to get back to Kirchhoff's laws. And Kirchhoff's law actually applies here because the current only has one path. So Kirchhoff's law applies here. So I'm going to get back to Kirchhoff's laws and, um, and Ohm's law. And put them all together and we're going to actually just right now we're going to jump into what we call voltage dividers so we're going to take ohm's law and kirchhoff's law and put them together and make a whole new formula is that did you just see me on the screen doing that yes okay so oh i have to do this yeah i'm so <laughs> it's so confusing i love it so first day everybody yeah <laughs> yeah my, it's my first day well i can set my feet Okay, let's take um, Kirchhoff's and Ohm's law and put them together, and then we'll talk about this voltage divider kind of thing. So, so what I can do is I want to find um, – oh, that says fund. Fund the source voltage. Okay, in your notes somewhere you're making, Lars, change that to find the source voltage. Um, so at this time, we have to fund the source voltage. So to fund the source voltage, we have to know how much voltage it needs to be a source voltage. So if I only knew the voltage drop across this – and I only knew the voltage drop across this, and I knew the voltage drop across this, then I could add them together.
together to get this voltage drop because Kirchhoff's voltage law for a series circuit tells me that the voltage drop across each resistor or each load in the circuit together adds up to the voltage source. So if I only knew the voltage drop here and here and here, I could figure it out, but I don't know the voltage drop here, but I've got the current here and I got the resistance so I can easily calculate, whoa, whoa, whoa. I can easily calculate the voltage. Okay, so I'm gonna do that here. VR1 is IR1, so I'm writing the formula. I'm filling in the formula, and then I write the answer. So we know the voltage drop across this guy is 37.7 volts. Easy. Now, I know the current through here because Kirchhoff's current law for a series circuit tells me that the current is the same through all of the resistors. Therefore, the current going through this resistor is going to be 1 amp. So if I know that, I can use Ohm's law, and I can calculate the current the voltage drop across this resistor, which is 23.22.3 volts. I just happen to know the voltage drop across here because it's labeled. And I'm going to use Kirchhoff's voltage law for a series circuit. And I'm going to add them all up and I'm going to come up with 100 ohms. So there you go. So now, the um, first, okay, so uh, find R3, use total resistance to find uh, RT and use Ohm's law. So what we can do is. There's another way to do this, and this is pretty cool because when we have all of these formulas that we can put together, there are actually different ways that we can solve each of these puzzles. In this particular case, the puzzle can be solved in two ways. Actually, we can solve it in probably three ways as well with maybe power. I don't, I don't know. Actually, we could solve it with power. But right now, what I'm going to show you guys is I'm going to say I can find the resistance of this. No problem. It's already written. I can also find the resistance here. It's written down. So I know the resistance here. I know the resistance here. I can calculate the resistance of this resistor because I know the voltage drop across that resistor. It's labeled. And I also know the current going through that resistor. So therefore, the resistance here plus the resistance there plus the resistance there equals the total resistance. And I just happen to have a formula that's called Ohm's law that tells me if I have the total resistance and the total current, I can calculate the source voltage. So I am going to then calculate the, the resistance here, and it seems to be 40 ohms. Therefore, I'm going to find the total resistance, which is 100 ohms, and I'm going to use that value. I'm going to plug it into this formula, V equals IR, where RT and IT is VS. Over here, as you can see, I'm specifically talking about Ohm's law for one resistor. So my subscripts are, are R1 and the one for R1. In this case, my subscripts are V2 and IR2 because I'm talking about the current and the voltage specifically for the second resistor. Over here, I'm saying Vs equals I times R, but it's IT because I'm talking about the total current and the total resistance. So it's absolutely crucial that we not only use Ohm's law and Kirchhoff's law wherever we want, but when we do use them, we have to specify what we're talking about. So if we're studying Ohm's law in one resistor, the subscripts have to talk about one resistor. And we will see that coming away when we start, when we talk about um, um, the voltage divider. Okay, good. So let's talk about this. I just want to say the relative ground thing. I think you guys are already good with this. I just have to kind of mention it again because we're going to use it when we talk about um, when we talk about voltage dividers. So I know here that I can write this like this. Uh, I can I can put a ground here and a ground here, and I know that it's the same as me putting a line all the way over to here. But so this is just the same potential spot electrically as this potential spot here. Essentially, this part of the battery right there, that little spot of the battery right there is this spot right there, and it's this spot. Okay, good. So as long as we understand we can use these, we can move along, and we can talk about the voltage drop across not just one or the other, but we can talk about the voltage potential and the voltage drop kind of coming together, and it looks like this. Okay, good. So now when I talk about voltage, it's either voltage potential or it's voltage drop, one or the other. Now, often we can look at the two as the same. If we look at one particular node as a potential voltage, 
relative to ground, then we say it's potential voltage at A. So I can say VA, the potential voltage at A, which means relative to ground. So the potential voltage at A is the total voltage drop across all of these because essentially the potential voltage at A is the same as VS. And we know that VS is the voltage drop across R1 plus the voltage drop across R2 plus the voltage drop across R3. So I could also see say that the voltage potential at VA is equal to the voltage drop across all of these. If I wanted to, I could say the voltage potential of VA is the voltage drop across all of these. So moving on with that concept, I can also say the voltage potential at B is the same as the voltage drop across this plus the voltage drop across this. And you can look at it this way. I have a certain amount of energy per unit Coulomb that exists coming out of this battery. As I go, as the current travels through here, some of that energy is used up to push the electrons through here. And now I have less energy. So the voltage is less. I've lost voltage pushing the electrons through here. Now the voltage here is the voltage potential here is less, but it is also equal to the voltage drop across this resistor and this resistor. I can also say that as the current travels through, I lose more and more energy pushing the current through here and now there's less energy at point C. So point C, the voltage potential at point C is equal to the voltage drop across R3. So with that said and done, how do we put that into a formula and why does it even matter? Well, it's because watch this, this is really cool. If I had a 20 volt source right here and I needed five volts, well, I could actually just put different resistors in here so that I have a five volt potential coming out of here. There's a formula for that and it looks like this. Well, let's go back to these slides. I could also study the voltage potential from here to there. Okay, now this is weird. Let me just back up. I did say the voltage potential at A is relative to ground. But I can, and I also, the voltage potential at B is relative to ground. The voltage potential at C is relative to ground. But I can also do the voltage potential between two nodal points. So, as we saw in the previous slide, the voltage potential is also equal to the voltage drop across those resistors. So the voltage potential at B is equal to the voltage drop across this plus the voltage drop across that. Here, the voltage potential between A and C is written differently. I no longer see, I no longer say VA. Up here, VA is the voltage potential between here and ground. Here, VAC is the voltage potential between here and here. There are a bunch of questions in the homework and in the worksheets that, that kind of ask you guys to, re, to go over these concepts again and again so that you can kind of really just get the concept in your head that the voltage potential between here and here is equal to the voltage drop across these two. But voltage potential is not always relative to ground. But if it isn't relative to ground, we have to say something like V sub A C. Okay, good. So with that said and done, if I take a look at this, we're going to see something that's kind of an inverse. And it has to do with the fact that current and resistance are inversely proportional. Watch this. If I have 10 volts here and I've got a 50 ohm resistor here and a 100 ohm resistor here, the voltage drop across this is greater than the voltage drop across this. And I think that makes sense. And that's because of Kirchhoff's law. I know there's Kirchhoff's law and Ohm's law put it together. And I know that the voltage drop across this is going to be less because it's less resistance. So therefore, less energy is used to push the current through here. So the voltage drop across this is going to be less than the voltage drop across this. And we know that 6.6 .6 Six 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 volts plus three point three 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 volts equals ten volts. I think we're fine with that. But look at this: the total resistance in this case is 150 ohms. It's important that we understand the total resistance is 150 ohms because the total voltage drop across these is relative to this. The total voltage drop across this 
seems to be one third of a tenth. The voltage drop across this 100 seems to be two thirds of this tenth. Well, guess what? 100 is two thirds of 150. 50 is one third of 150. So this 150 is actually quite relevant. And we'll see that in this formula here. Good. So what we're going to see is the voltage drop across any at any spot in a circuit is equal to the resistance in that part of the circuit or the the relative resistance in this vx divided by the total resistance and then multiplied by this voltage source let me go back over here so if i looked at this and i said okay what do i how do i find the voltage drop across this I take the total voltage and I multiply this by some kind of ratio. I, sorry, I multiply the total voltage by a ratio of the resistance. The ratio of that resistance is 50 divided by 100. It's 50 divided by 100, and I think that makes sense. So as opposed to just beating this kind of dead horse, let's just go on and see the application. Okay, here we go. You need a voltage supply of 20 volts, and you have a voltage source of 20, of 40 volts. So you're, you have 40 volts, but all you need is 20. So I'm going to put a 200 ohm resistor here and a 200 ohm resistor here. Now, I know the voltage potential here is going to be 20. And you guys know that without even doing the math. You know that this guy divides the voltage and this guy divides the voltage evenly. But look at this. If I added 200 plus 200, I'd get 400. Well, 200 divided by 400 is a half. Well, if I took... 40 and multiplied it by a half, I get the voltage drop across here. And if we actually plug it into our formula, it, there's our formula. I'm going to write my formula down. I'm going to plug in my numbers. Look at the formula. Very specific. The voltage at B is relative to the resistance, the resistive nature of B, which is R2, going back up here. Going back up here. Look, the resistive nature of VB is this resistor and this resistor here. So if I look down here, the voltage B, it's it's due to the voltage drop across this resistor, R2. So R2 divided by the total resistance times this. So this is our ratio, and I'm multiplying that by the total. I fill in my formula, and I get my numbers. I have to make sure I put my units in there. And I know that ohms divided by ohms equals nothing, and I end up with volts, and my answer is volts. So that was pretty simple. Let's go on and take a look at another one that actually is a little bit more complicated, and we'll see what's going on here. Now, calculate the voltage potential of VB. Okay, so I'm going to write the formula down. But specifically, when I write VBD, I have to write somewhere in my formula, I have to write R, R1, R2, R3, no. I have to write R2 plus R3 because VB, the nature of the voltage drop that exists because of V is because of these two resistors. So my formula looks like this. I think this is the most tr tricky part to calculating to using the voltage uh, divider formula is figuring out what this resistance is. Well, it's whatever voltage you're studying, it's the voltage drop across those resistors. So in this case, I find these total these two resistors and I divide them by the total and I multiply it by 20. And I'm just filling the formula. So I've got this resistance, which is this plus this, divided by the total resistance, which is this plus this plus this plus this. And that's ohms and that's ohms multiplied by 20. If you wanted, you could just write whatever 94 plus 7, 417 divided by, and then the total resistance. I'm fine with that. I'm just kind of unpacking so that you can see the full explanation. And then I write the answer. It's that simple, I got five volts. So if I were to stick a, a DMM on here and measure voltage, I would have five volts. If I needed to run something that was needed five volts, I could hook it up to here and it would have five volts to run. You know, we'll talk about a little bit more of what I can run from here a little bit later, but right now I wanna continue on. And I'm gonna write my conclusion statement uh, so the transducer will have a 5 volt I. So this transducer here is something that's the load itself doesn't require a lot of current. The thing about this is if I'm using a voltage divider to power something, just believe me with this, you better make sure that whatever you're powering only requires a very small amount of current. 
Okay, good. So here we go. Voltage transducers require a small amount of current. We can actually take a voltage divider and we can make it the voltage divider out of a potentiometer because the potentiometer essentially is this wiper that moves up and down. It moves up and down, up and down, up and down. It goes back and forth. So I'm essentially dividing this resistor into two resistors, which is this guy and this guy. And the three point is the one right in the middle. And from there, I can actually do some math with it. So if I had my voltage divider and I turn it, we're using a 600 ohm potentiometer. So that means that this whole resistive strip, the total resistance from one to two of the voltage of the actual potentiometer is 600 ohms. Now, if I were to put my wiper one third of the way, I know that the resistance from here to there is 200 ohms and the resistance from there to there is 400 ohms. Okay, that's fine. If I want to calculate the voltage potential coming out at B, I'm going to use the voltage divider. There you go, VAB. Okay, if I wanted to know the voltage potential between A and B, I would write the voltage divider down and the resistance of AB, which is going to be 200 because it's only one third of the way, is going to be 200 here. I divide among the total resistance multiplied by the voltage and I get 10 volts. And I think that makes sense. Look at it. I've only turned it one third of the way down and I'm dealing with 30 volts. So I've divided it up into a 10 and a 20 because I've got or one third and two thirds. Two thirds of 30 volts is 20 volts. And over here, if I wanted to know the voltage potential between at, at point B, so VB is VRB, and then I put this ground, you don't have to write ground, I'm just saying relative to ground. I'm just putting that there so you know that VB, if I ever say just VB, it's always the voltage of at point B relative to ground. If I say VAB, it's a voltage potential between the two of them. So we know that V, we know that this volt, this resistance here all the way down to ground, whatever is left, which is 400 ohm, is going to be there. And then I divide it by the total resistance and then I multiply it by this and I get 20. So I think that just makes sense. It's intuitive. And this is really cool because if I have this potentiometer, sorry, if I have this potentiometer hooked up to this and I turn that, I get different voltage coming out of my B. And that's actually how all of the dials work for anything. What a voltage dial works, what a timer works, um, sensors, all kinds of sensors, calibration of sensors. You just turn the dial a little bit and a different voltage comes out. It's quite remarkable. It's so cool. Now, what I want to do is I want to talk about power and um, and then and then I'm actually going to talk about this cool concept of an open circuit. And, um, and what a short is, and we're gonna talk about shorts, and then we're gonna have a summary. So I wanna to talk to you guys about this. So let's do the, you know what, I think I can do this. I'm gonna jump over on the board here. And if I just do this. You good? I'm good, okay, good. So let me do this. Um, this is really cool. I'm going to unpack a circuit, and I'm gonna do this. And we're going to calculate power total. But I also want to walk through some of these. So I'm going to say this is um, 60 volts. This is 20 ohms. This is uh, 10 ohms. And this guy is um, 30 ohms. Okay. Well, no, 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 no. 30 ohms. Okay, good. So now... Let's actually unpack this. Let's talk about Kirchhoff's laws for a, a, a series circuit. We'll talk about how we can apply Ohm's law in here. Um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to calculate the total current, um, and I'm also going to calculate the current. Actually, I can calculate the current through this by looking at the voltage between any of these. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use the voltage divider formula to find the voltage across any one of these. Then I'm going to use Ohm's law to find the current through any one of these, and then I'll actually know the total circuit current. And from there, I can calculate the total power. So what I want to do is unpack this. So right now, I'm going to do the, I'm going to find the voltage drop across one of these. So I'm going to do R1, R2, and R3. And you guys are going to tell me which of these should I use the voltage um, the voltage divider rule to find the count to calculate the voltage drop across this R1, R2, or R3. 
<laughs> First guy wins. No, apparently not. Come on, guys, say something. Type something in. Yeah, like I'm here. You're not here. Yeah, which one? I'm gonna use the voltage divider formula to calculate the voltage drop across one of these resistors. Which one should I do it to? How many students do we have, Rod? Um, 66. Okay, and so Cadell I... Marshall says R3. Okay, thank you so very much, sir. Okay, rock it. Let's do it. Okay, so now. I want to do V R three. Okay, so I have some formula. I know this. I like to write my voltage formula like this. I know I'm going to take the volt, the source voltage, and I'm going to multiply it by some ratio of resistances. That's how I look at it. I'm going to take my source voltage and I'm going to multiply it by some ratio. And we're going to see this come through so many times. Even when I teach you guys um, electronics one, or maybe Peter teaches you, you will see this same theme. Okay, good. So I've got my voltage source. I multiply it by some ratio. That ratio is relative to the resistances. I'm looking for the voltage drop across R3. So I'm going to write R3 on the top. Okay, here we go. So I'm going to write R3 here. And in this case, I'm going to write RT. Now we know in this case, because I'm dealing with a series circuit, RT is R1 plus R2 plus R3. Fine. Whatever. It's easy. Okay. Good. Now I'm going to go down here and I'm going to fill this in. This is 60 volts. This ratio down here is 60 ohms. And this guy is 30 ohms. And it looks like, oh, that makes sense. Look at this. This is half the resistance of all of the resistors. It's half of the resistors. So it's probably taking half of the voltage. It is actually. Look at this. This guy, if I multiply this half by 160, I get 30 volts. Sweet. Now I have the voltage drop across this, which is 30 volts, and I'm gonna label that. Okay, here we go. So I'm gonna go from here to here, and I'm gonna say VR3 is 30 volts. Sweet. So I know that. Now, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to calculate the current going through here. Now, I lots of ways I can do current. I can, I can do this. I can use this formula here. IT equals VS over RT. So if I use, that's Ohm's law. V equals IR. It's that simple. If I use Ohm's law relative to everything, I have to write IT, RT, VS. But I want to use Ohm's law just for this guy right here. So I'm going to say here in Ohm's law, Ohm's law, okay, I'm going to say V, sorry, I'm going to say I R3 equals V R3 divided by R3. See that? As opposed to calculating the total current, I'm focusing in, I get my microscope, I'm focusing in on a specific spot in the circuit. So I have to use my subscripts describing that. Okay, I write the value down here and I go for 30 volts divided by 30 ohms, which is going to be one amp. Did you have a question from somebody? No. Okay, good. So I know here, now watch this. I also know this is true from like one of our first slides. I know that I, T equals I R one equals I R two equals I R three. One, two, three. Yes. So because of this statement, because the current here is the same as the current there, same as the current there, current there, current there, I know now that actually I T and I the current here, here, here is actually one amp. So now I can calculate the voltage drop across this and across this using Ohm's law. Or if I really wanted to, I could just go ahead and use the voltage divider and calculate the voltage here and the voltage here. It's no problem. So I've used numbers, actually, that are really simple. That is actually going to be 20 volts. That's going to be 10 volts. And that's going to be 30 volts. And there you go. So it's whatever. I used simple numbers so we could see it that way. Um, but we've done that now. I started talking about power. I got it all of this. Okay, well, you know what? All of this links into power. Now, we know that there are different ways to calculate power. Okay, so now I'm going to go over here. 
I'm gonna count, I'm gonna get rid of this because we, we already know how to do that. I just need a little bit of space here. Uh, usually in the classroom, I start walking around the whole classroom, right? Uh, and I'm all over the place because the boards are everywhere, but here I kind of I'm limited. So here we go. So what I want to do here is I want to actually count, start calculating power. So I know I got one amp. I'm not actually gonna write that here. I know that this is one amp, and that's I. T, it's also ion, IR2, IR3, whatever. So I'm going to get rid of this. So we know our voltages. We know the current. Let's step into power. I'm going to write a formula for power on the board. And I'm going to write it in here. I'm going to write it here. So PT equals P, whoa, this is not a P, PR, in my brain I had R1, plus P. R2 plus P R3 plus dot 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 P R N. So if I were to find the power here and here and here, I could actually find the total power in the circuit. And we know from last week, we also know that power is actually equal, if I could say PT, total power is equal to IT times Vs, because we know its power is current times voltage. Now, if we really wanted to, we could get a little bit more funky. We could say PT equals um, v, Vs squared divided by RT, or we could say PT <coughs> equals I, IT squared RT. Again, it's important to use your subscripts. It's absolutely important that whenever you use your subscripts, you, you talk about whatever it is that you're studying. Okay, so with all of that said, we know this is, we also know that there's this other kind of formula, which is really cool, and I'm just going to write the general form. P is energy over time, and if we really wanted to, after we calculated all of this, we could go back to this and we could say, hey, how much energy is being dissipated by all of these resistors? We could, but we'd have to know the time. So we could say, hey, uh, over, over an hour, how much energy is dissipated? We could do that. But right now, we're just talking about total power. So starting back on this, focusing on this formula here, okay? So I'm going to focus on this formula here, and you're going to find that this formula here is also the exact same formula for parallel circuits and for parallel series circuits. And it's very empowering because it helps us solve puzzles. Okay, let's go on here. Now, what's the total power here? I mean, what's the power here? What's the power there? What's the power there? Well, I can use any individual. I could use this. I mean, I know the voltage drop across it is 20 volts. I know the voltage drop across that is it's 10 volts. So I'm going to I'm going to calculate this. I'm going to say power R1 equals I R1 times V R1. Again, I'm using those subscripts. It's important. Okay, I'm going to write this down. I know that's 1 amp times 20. Ugh, I don't know what I'm doing. 20 volts, which is going to equal, what's that equal? 20 watts. Okay. So I know that this guy is 20 watts. Okay, that's all about that guy there. Let me calculate this guy. Okay, so PR2 is equal to IR2 times VR2, which is equal to 1 amp times 10 volts, which is equal to 10 watts. Okay, good. So I know I've got this guy here. Okay, that's fine. And that represents this guy. This guy is just as easy to calculate. And that's going to be PR3 is equal to IR3 times VR3, which is going to be 1 amp times 30. Whoa, that's not, that's not how you write 30. My fingers, they don't write 30 sometimes. <laughs> okay, so 30 volts, which equals... 30 watts. Okay, cool. So I've got this guy, and I know that represents this guy. So I now know the power of this, this, and this. You know what? Before I even apply this formula, I'm actually going to use this formula here. Okay? So 
if I actually wanted to calculate PT, I would equal, I would take I T and multiply it by V S. In that case, again, it's one amp times, in this case, 60 volts, which equals 60 watts. Cool. So as you can see, 20 plus 10 plus 30 is 60. So I can actually go ahead and use this formula, and I can say PT equals PR1 plus PR2 plus PR3. Fill in my values, and I'm actually going to get a little smart with my units, and I'm going to write 20 plus 10 plus 30 watts equals 60 watts. So what I've done is I've used the voltage divider to solve one of the voltage drops across a resistor. From there, I found the current. Because of Kirchhoff's current law for a series circuit, I know that all of the current, the current through any spot in the circuit is the same. So I was able to identify the fact that I had current. I know that one amp is traveling, or the rate of the, the electrons traveling through R1 and R2 and R3 are the same. From there, just in my head, I was able to quickly identify the fact that the voltage drop across this is 20 volts, the voltage drop across that is 10 volts, and I knew the voltage drop across that is 30 because I calculated it. So from there, I then applied each of these values, knowing the voltage drop and the current, and I found the power in each. And I was able to add those together and find that it was 60 watts. I also looked at just the total. And I think in this particular example, one of the things we've learned, it's pretty simple just to kind of see all of this go together. It's not surprising. But I think one of the things that we've learned here that's really important is that when we're talking about this, we use the subscripts of it. When we're talking about all of the total, we use subscripts to say T for total. So that's important. Um, what I want to do now is before I move on, uh, I'm going to move on to shorts and also something that's actually quite remarkable. It's also another trick I can trick you guys with. But before I move on, I want to stop and say, this is what we've done so far. Okay. We started out saying Kirchhoff's current law is this. And Kirchhoff's current law for a series circuit, yeah, there are Kirchhoff's current laws for a parallel circuit. You got something. Kirchhoff's voltage law. Oh, thank you. So Kirchhoff's voltage law for a series circuit. Actually, no, I started with Kirchhoff's current law. I will continue. Kirchhoff's current law for a series circuit tells us that the current is the same throughout the whole circuit. Kirchhoff Voltage law for a series circuit tells us that the voltage drop across all of the loads or all of the resistors in a circuit is going to add up the total. We also saw that we could actually take the concept of a voltage source, or maybe we could say, what is the voltage potential at a spot? And not only can we say what's the voltage potential relative to ground, so just VA or VB, but we can say, what's the voltage potential between two spots? So what's the voltage between potential A and B? So for instance, if I get this over here, so I'm going to put a spot here, a spot here, and a spot here. I could study A, B, C. I, the voltage potential at point A is relative to ground. The voltage potential at point B is relative to ground. The voltage potential at point C is relative to ground. But the voltage potential between A and B, so V, sorry, V, B, C, is the voltage potential between the two of those. We saw that there's a really simple formula for that. And you know, I'm just going to draw that formula again on the board. I'm going to draw it in blue here, and I'm going to put it in this little square over here. And it's, it's sorry, it's V, yeah, V, X, equals, now I'm going to write Vs, I'm going to write the formula a little differently because I like to look at it as though I'm taking the total voltage and I'm multiplying it by some ratio. And I know that that ratio at the bottom is always Rt, and in this case, I'm looking at Rx. Now, I know that the voltage potential, or the voltage drop, is kind of the same, but it, it matters what I'm looking at. In this case, if I want to know the voltage potential, V, B, I would actually use this 
value here, and I would use the total resistance. So my value that I'd be putting in this Rx would be my R2. If I wanted to know the voltage potential, Vb, just right here, that's relative to here. So the value that I'm putting here in my Rx is the voltage drop across all of these because that's the nature of Vb. It's like the current moves through here. I lose voltage here, and I'm left with some here. How much am I left with? Well, the stuff I'm left with, the voltage I'm left with is relative to how much resistance is left to go. So in this case, if I want to know just the B, in this case, I would use R2 plus R3. This formula here, we will see this form in many other things in electronics as we move forward. Okay, good. So we studied voltage um, potential, and we, and we started, we studied uh, the voltage the voltage divider formula here, um, and then we talked about power, and we can see that all we do is actually just take Ohm's law and the power law, and we put it all together, and we see that the total power is equal to the sum of all of the individual powers, and that's also the same for parallel circuits, which is so cool. So before I move on to one more thing about short circuits, I want to ask, are there any questions? If you guys think about that, and I'm going to draw a short circuit. You're going? Rod, so Rod's question is, can I go? Um, and please, yes, please, sir. yes, please, yeah, you may, and please do, and it's nice. To, hey, thank you, Rod, everybody. Thank you, Rod. Thanks, Rod. Right. Thank you, Rod. Okay, here we go. So bear with me uh, while I erase all of this here, them, there stuff, because you know all of the him, there, them, there stuff is really important. <laughs> Is that how, can you write that down for me, Rod? The, 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 yeah, it's in the book, I got it. You got it in the book, yeah, because you're making all the notes and stuff, so you, you write all that down. I think this is a good class, they're pretty sharp. Okay. Yeah. Why, what, what are they, what are they saying? <laughs> saying, I love you, Rod. <laughs> I love these guys. <laughs> they're awesome. <laughs> I think they're, gonna, they're all going to do very, very well on the exam. Oh, yeah, okay. Yeah, oh, 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 uh oh. Okay, guys, I wanted to tell you that I do actually take bribes. Did I just say that out loud? <laughs> yeah, no, I take bribes from Mark, so I'll give you 100% on the course, no problem. Um, I just I just need enough to retire. Yeah, that's really funny. That's actually funny in lecture, because I can actually <laughs> see everyone laugh. You guys are just a camera. <laughs> okay, here we go. So, um, what am I talking about? Oh, yeah, I need this. So, Rod, I will leave this door open so that there's a little bit of uh, air coming through here. Okay, good. So, now I'm going to trick you guys again. I love messing with you guys. Here we go. Um, okay, I'm just going to... Boy, is that ever noisy. R1. R2. R3. Now, I'm going to calculate the current. I'm just going to write really simple, 30 volts, 10 ohms. Whoa, that's not how you do an ohms. 10 ohms. 10 ohms. 10 ohms. 10 ohms. Okay, good. So let's just do a real quick, quick, simple math here. RT. So my RT, RT equals R1 plus R2 plus R3, and in that case, that's really simple. I'm just going to write 30 ohms, and we know in this case, I, T, is going to be equal to Vs divided by RT, and in that case, I've got 30 volts divided by 30 ohms, and I've got one amp. Okay, good. So I know there's one amp going through here, so I'm just going to label that. Okay, one Amp. I'm going to label that. I'm also going to label this RT. So I'm just going to write in the middle RT equals 30 ohms. Okay, that's good. Um, so now I can just get rid of that. We don't need that there. It's like, you know, what? I think hopefully you're getting a feeling, you know, like there's that, there's that magician, 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 and he's doing a trick and he's talking through stuff and you're like, what is he? Why is he saying that? Is he, is he just trying to distract me from the truth? That's kind of what I'm doing. Trying to, trying to distract you. Um, here we go. I'm trying to trick you. Okay, here we go. So now, 
We know there's current going through here and above. We actually know the voltage drop across all of these. Well, that's easy. That's going to be 10 volts. So that's 10 volts. So we know that VR1 is 10 volts. VR2 equals 10 volts. And VR3 equals 10 volts. Um, just for the heck of it, I'm just going to prove that. We know that V um, R1, R, R1 equals Vs times some kind of ratio. And um, actually, I'm not even sure if you can see that. Vr1 equals Vs times some kind of ratio. We know the RT is on the bottom. That is going to be R1, which is so R1. So that is 30, 30 volts times 10 ohms divided by 30 ohms, which is equal to 10 volts. Okay, so I just proved it using the voltage divider formula, and that's fine, so it's here. Okay, good. So I can write those down, and I can leave all of that, and now here comes the trickery. See if you can follow me on this. Okay, now I am going to get my DMM, and uh, I'm going to write my DMM on here. I'm going to write it. I'm going to put a DMM right here. Now, my DMM in this case is measuring voltage. Okay, that's good. So, you know what? I'm just going to measure potential voltage at certain spots. So, I'm going to write, a, I'm going to put some spots here. That's spot A. Uh, I'm going to write here, and that's spot B. And then I'm going to go here. I'm going to write C. So, if I wanted to find the voltage potential at any one spot, I'm actually going to just ground this guy here, and I'm going to ground this guy here. So we know that I'm studying voltage potential. I'm not going to look at the voltage potential between B and C. I'm just going to, actually, that's just C. Sorry. Um, I'm just going to look at the voltage potential at A, B, C. Okay, good. So now here we go. Um, if I were to hook this up to here, uh, if I were to hook it up to A, I know that what I would do is I would actually see the source voltage because I'm studying the voltage drop across this and this and this so the total so i'm actually going to see 30 volts because really that wire that's connected here is actually still also fully connected to there as well but what i'm going to do is i'm going to pull my wire over to here now what do i see well i think you guys know i'm seeing 10 volts 20 volts it's pretty simple because i know the volts drop across this is 10 and the volts drop across that's 10 so it's fine i could actually go ahead and do the voltage divider formula it would be pretty simple, um, and it would show me that I do actually have over here, I actually do see this thing, say, 20 volts. Okay, good. So I know that says 20 volts. Now, I'm going to mess with you guys. Watch this, right? I just broke the circuit. What does the DMM read now? Any thoughts? Let's see what you guys have to say. This is actually really interesting. Um, okay, so I got zero volts, zero volts, zero volts. Anybody else got anything else to say other than zero volts? 30 volts with a question mark. Huh, 20 volts with no question mark. Okay, good. So 20 volts, 20 volts, 30 volts. Okay, good. Guess what, guys? Somebody is right. The answer is, hold on a second. Let me write it here. Ready for the big answer? Yeah, 30 volts. Why? Yeah. Why is it, Wait, is, wait just, just hold on a second. Why is it 30 volts? It doesn't make any sense, right? Because think about it. Wait a second. I've got this guy here. So are you telling me that it's reading the voltage up here? Are you telling me that it's actually reading this? Is that, is that what you're saying in your head? Like, Lars, no, 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 no. Well, actually, it's true. It's reading this. It's actually reading this. Now, watch this. I'm going to go back to this formula, okay? Voltage equals, okay, the voltage equals some kind of energy per charge. Okay. So that charge is actually all about the charge that has been moved through a particular load. So when we have a particular, so we're looking at voltage drop here. So if I actually were to study VR1, okay, so the voltage drop across VR1, we can actually do this through own law as well, but I, I want to kind of walk through like this. Um, what's VR1 in this case? Well, it's zero. 
the reason it's zero is because there actually is no energy being used to push electrons through here. And there's also no electrons being pushed through here. It's an open circuit. There's no current. The other, the other way to look at it is like this. I know that VR1 equals, V equals IR, IR. So in this case, that's IR1 and that's R1. So in this case, what's the voltage drop across that resistor? Well, it, no, just no. It's not even, oh, I can calculate it. No, it's just the answer is just no. The reason is because dude, there's no current. I mean, there is some resistance, but there's no current. The current's zero. So the voltage drop is zero. So if the voltage drop is zero across this, then the same potential exists here. So that's actually going to be, once I break this open, it's going to be, well, I don't know how to write a 30. Yeah, there, there are special people in my head. Okay, good. So it's 30 volts. It's because of this. So that is the one thing you need to glean from this. So when I put in a question exactly like this on the exam, I hope you get it right. Okay, good. So now the other thing I need to do is I'm actually going to work with the same circuit, but I'm just going to have to erase everything because I got too much stuff here. So that is what we just learned. So we learned that the voltage potential in an open spot in a circuit is actually equal to, if it's touching the voltage source, it's equal to the voltage source. If I had stuck that probe onto point C, I mean, you already have, you still have that diagram in your head. Point C was like down here. If I were to stick it on point C, well, I would have zero potential because it's not connected in any way. It's not seeing the voltage source. But the reason that the DMM is seeing 30 volts is because there's simply no voltage drop across R1. Okay, with all that said and done, this is another thing that I'm going to put on the exam. This didn't mean I put things on exams. It's terrible. Okay, here we go. So I'm going to do this and this and this. Okay. That's going to be R1. It's going to be R2, R3. I'm going to go with the same thing, 10 ohms, 10 ohms, 10 ohms. And we know the total circuit current is 1 amp. Um, and there we go. So and the, we got the 10 volts here, 10 volts here, 10 volts here. That's fine. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to short a part of the circuit. So I'm actually going to take a, a connection from here. Let's just say that these were in some kind of circuit. Like, let's say there was a circuit in a box, and there was another wire in the box, or maybe a little a little clip, or another piece of metal in the box, and that fell down on the circuit. And it actually fell down on a spot that went in between here. So now there's this connection between here and here. It's called shorting out a component. So if I were to short this component out, does the current go up or down? Well, what happens to the resistance? Well, guess what? This guy is no longer part of the circuit. He's just gone. But, I mean, the electrons that are flowing through here, when they leave here and they try and go that way, all they want to do is get back to here. So they will find, they will take the path of least resistance. If I had a resistor in here, they wouldn't even travel through that resistor. They would just go right through the wire. So the total resistance of the current, current, the total resistance of the circuit goes down. And we know, we know that current is proportional to the inverse oh, they don't make any, of resistance. They're inversely proportional to each other. We know that if current, if resistance goes down, current goes up. So in this case, the current is going to go up because the resistance went down. So when I short a circuit, the current goes up. Now watch this. If I were to take this and put this over here, now the current's going to go up even more because the total resistance of the circuit is only 10 ohms. It's going to go up quite a bit. It's going to be actually 3 amps now. So that is the conclusion of what I want you guys to know. I hope you get it all. Um, I'm sure that the homework will not be that difficult. We, you will find that parallel circuits are a little bit more complicated than series circuits. So just consider this lecture to be a breeze. Yeah. Next lecture will be more complicated, especially when we start shorting things in this lecture. After the break, 
Um, so the week after next, sorry, next week we're doing parallel circuits. The week after that, we're going to do um, the exam. Um, and the exam will actually be during this period, you will go on to Blackboard and there will be an exam link for you. And yes, I will post a review. It will be an exam link for you and you'll go in. It will be open during this window only and it will shut down when the class is done. I will be like two hours to do the exam, lots of time. And when that two hour window is closed, you will be kicked out, bam. So make sure you're here on time. I will tell you that again next week. So next week we're doing parallel circuits and then the week after we're gonna do the exam. The week after is the break, is the midterm break. Uh, and then um, the week after that we're gonna do series parallel where I really need you guys to come fully ready to wrap your head around some pretty complicated stuff. So let me go back on my computer. Now you guys can see, and I am me, and am I? Yeah, I'm still me. Okay, good. So um, the question is, Josh had a question, and you guys can read that. Um, is like, okay, so wait a second. Is that mean the voltage is zero? Well, it's true if that was true, if the current was zero. And if the, sorry, if, volta, if V total is equal to I total, by R total, yeah, and, and, and the, yeah, that's right. So that's, what, what I'm saying is here that for us to apply any of these laws, any of these laws at all, for, for Ohm's law to even be available to, to even think about, or Kirchhoff's laws, or the voltage divider law, or any of this, we have to have a circuit. Like the definition of circuit is a closed path, a load, and a voltage source. As soon as we open up the path, no longer an active circuit. We cannot apply any of these laws. So essentially, the answer there is, is Josh, is that's a good question. Um, and the answer is no, because we can't apply any of those laws because they no longer apply because it's not a circuit. It's an open circuit. There's nothing actually going on. Um, so yeah, so that I think that's good. So guys, so I just wanna, I'm just gonna poke over at the PowerPoint here. Um, yeah, let me go back to the PowerPoint because I've got some good things I wanna say over there. Um, in conclusion so okay here we go so here we got the PowerPoint yep that's PowerPoint um, so we're gonna go from this slide so what's going on here is this is the whole thing that's going on that what's happening is it because I have zero voltage across this and I have zero current and then I have no voltage drop so that this guy is actually seeing 30 volts because he's seeing this and that's what's going on. so now this other short if I short this, my question is, will the fuse blow? Well, let's take a look at this. I put a 500 milliamp fuse in here, and the total, what was the total current before? 10 ohms plus 100 ohms plus 100 ohms, that's 120 ohms. Um, okay, so that's 120 ohms. So if I get my calculator out, and I take that, I mean, actually, it's pretty easy. If I take my calculator and I say 12 divided by 120 ohms, my current is 100 milliamps. Right, so in this case, the current going through here, if this is not shorted, it's going to be 100 milliamps. That fuse will not blow. Now, if I short it, the total resistance is now 20 ohms. So 12 divided by 20 is going to be 600 milliamps. So yes, the fuse will blow. So you can see the reason why we put fuses in because, dude, if I didn't use there, this resistor, is actually having more current go through it than it's probably designed for. So the power of that resistor, so if I took the current and squared it times 10, I'm gonna actually end up with 3.6 watts. So there's 3.6 watts. This thing is probably not designed to manage 3.6 watts. It's probably managed to handle, so 0.1 squared times 10, it's probably, uh, yeah, that's, that's, that's 0.1 watts. So yeah, that's going to go from 0.1 watts up quite a bit. It's going to go up from 0.1 watts of power that it has to dissipate. It has to dissipate right now. If this is not shorted, this resistor has to dissipate 0.1 joules of energy every second. If I short this, this resistor is being asked to dissipate 3.6. So that means 3.6 joules per second. So that's 3.6 watts. This resistor is probably only designed to dissipate one watt. So the resistor will actually physically fail if this short happens. So we put a fuse in here so the current stops. So that's what that's all about. And here's just an example of how the short works. 
and this is the summary. I think I've already, you know, gone through a summary with you guys. So uh, I'm going to kill that, and I'm going to go back to here, and I'm going to just be me. So uh, now I'm going to sit back a little bit and say, um, how are we doing? And uh, lag. Lagging. Oh, I need tea. You know what? I need tea, too. So that's it. I don't want to talk to you guys anymore. But enough of you. I'm kidding. I'm, I'm, I love talking to you guys. Know that. So I'm going to end my recording. So goodbye to the people that are watching in the recording. Goodbye.